Hello and welcome back to Quarantine Kitchen. We had quite a hiatus with gardening season, but now that there's snow on the ground and we are back in lo uh, semi-lockdown at least, we're uh, going to try making uh, some... Maybe... Beefcake! <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're not making beefcake. We're making breakfast pockets. Uh, breakfast pockets is a recipe I picked up quite a few years ago. And uh, it's a yeast dough. And in it you put a mixture of sausage, egg, potato, cheese, onion, and spices. And uh, bake that in the, uh, like, like a pizza pocket, sort of. but. And then freeze it and then you've got breakfast in your hand with a minute in the microwave. So I think we will get started now. I've got most of my ingredients measured so we'll start with we put one cup of oil. Just a basic canola oil will work fine. And I use approximately a table, a generous tablespoon of honey. You need a little bit of uh, sugar or such in here to help your yeast rise. So there's our tablespoon of honey. Of course, honey is never as easy to work with as sugar, but I believe it's better for you. So there we go. Now, uh, two teaspoons of salt. Um, and the milk should be scalded. So I just put it in, it's one and two thirds cup of milk. And I put it in the microwave for one minute. While that's heating, there are two eggs that go in here. So I am extra cautious and I usually crack them in a dish just because it's so hard to fish shell out of a larger bowl. So there's one egg. And here's our second egg going in while our milk is heating. So we've got our two eggs now, and I have already measured three cups of whole wheat flour into this bowl, and to that I will add one tablespoon of instant rise yeast. I like to mix when I'm using instant rise yeast, well actually there's about one and a half tablespoons, pardon me. Uh, when I, I like to use, when I'm using instant rise yeast, I like to mix it in with my flour and then of course you're always adding more flour as you're doing it but this gives your yeast a nice even distribution so our milk is ready and we'll add that in if you're doing this when it's quite cold out i have a, a pyrex bowl so i sometimes warm that a bit first now our, our water we need one cup of tepid water. Of course you don't want anything too hot because it would kill your yeast. So let me check here. Yep, we got our one cup. So that is our six main ingredients and now we'll take that and beat it up, mix our eggs in, make sure our sugar is, I mean our honey is stirred in. Now we'll stir our flour and yeast in. We'll get that stirred in and then of course there'll be more flour to add. It's approximately six cups of flour that I add and I use all brown flour for this. I started out with all white, then I switched to half and half and now I've gone to all brown flour. So we'll start adding a little bit more flour and pretty soon we'll be ready to start mixing with our hands. Just add a little bit more flour and get it mixed again. Of course, Add your flour in small increments. Cleaning off your bowl. Now this amount of dough, with the measurements I have told you, makes 
enough for eight dozen pockets. And the filling we're using today makes enough for four dozen. I like to do that and then I, the dough freezes well as in the raw state and then I can uh, then I don't have to make dough each time, only every other time. I'll just put a slight dusting of flour on that. Because of course as it rises it gets just slightly sticky. And we will put that off to the side, a tea towel here to cover it. And then we can get started on our filling. So we've got all our ingredients here to make our filling. One of the most important things is to get a good quality sausage meat. That's approximately three pounds of a pork and beef mix breakfast sausage. We get it from our local butcher and uh, it's, it's very important to get that quality sausage meat. We're just heating up our pan. Don't get it too hot because you don't want things to stick. But you need to have it heated up a bit before you pop your sausage meat in. I have used the dough as a pizza crust as well and uh, it has turned out very well. So, and as you'll see at the end, if I have a little bit left, I often make a little bit of a cinnamon bun with it. So the dough is very flexible and our pan is pretty much hot enough. So we're going to add our sausage. Now, one of the things I have found with my sausage that some people mention was texture. So a big thing is to make sure that your sausage is well chopped up. And I'm sure there are many companies that sell a version of this. I like to use this. This is from Pampered Chef. I, no, I don't sell it. But uh, it really chops things up well. So once you get your meat partially cooked, then you can work on chopping it up. Now this takes just a few minutes to get the, the meat cooked up. I just keep working at it as it's cooking. And as I said, I wait till it's partially cooked before I use the other tool in here. chopped onion here. Chopped or medium fine and I'm going to add that in. Again it's you can vary that as to your preference in terms of what you like and we'll let that cook for a moment and we'll get started on grating our potatoes. All right so now we're going to get grate our potatoes. I've peeled about half a dozen good sized potatoes and we're going to take and start grating them. I like to grate right into the measuring cup so that I know when I've got to my, like I say, seven to eight cups, depending on how much you pack them in. So we're going to just get these grated. All right, so we're adding four of the cups and stir that in. I don't like to grate my potato ahead of time because, of course, the starch in the potato causes it to darken. So I like to grate it just as I'm going to be using it. Stir that in a bit. And we'll grate the other four cups. I have used all different kinds of potatoes too. It doesn't matter. Red, white, and you know, golden. Yukon gold, anything you've got. I haven't found it makes much difference to the final product. This is the part that Ray always hates when I grate right down to the end. He's uh, always sure that I'm going to grate my fingers. So, generally I don't unless he's in the kitchen. At one point I was using the mandolin to slice a whole bunch of carrots for freezing and for dehydrating and been doing it all day. He came home and said, 
be careful, be careful, you're going to cut yourself. And within a minute, I had cut my thumb badly enough that I couldn't continue that for a couple of days. So, I guess that shows the power of suggestion. I'm not sure, but generally I just don't like them in the kitchen when they're grating. So there, that's about our eight cuts now. Now that doesn't take very long. So we'll just add that to our, to our mixture. All right, so here's our other last of our four cups of grated potato, and we're just gonna scoop that into our mixture here and get that stirred in. I'm gonna turn our heat up a bit now that we're back with it. Now we're gonna start adding our spices too. And we add approximately a teaspoon of fine grind black pepper. And give, I, I stir in between each one. You don't have to, I suppose. But I just find it, I just think it mixes in a little better if you stir between each one. And then there's approximately a teaspoon of garlic, granulated garlic. Not garlic salt, but granulated garlic. And approximately a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Again, this is a personal preference. I like them to have just a little bit of zing, but you could add more or less as your preference, as your taste go. So we'll get that stirred in as well, and then we just need to let that all sort of cook for a few minutes while we crack our eggs. And like it is 14 eggs that you're cracking. So it takes a little bit of time. them a little bit at a time around all the whole thing. And just about done with the filling. The eggs will have to cook in. This part you have to watch fairly closely. You don't want your heat too high, but you don't want to be standing here forever either. So just keep mixing your egg in through everything else and keep stirring it a bit. There, that's looking about right. So we'll just turn off our burner and pop that off to the side. I add my cheese in once it's off the burner. So I add my grated, grated cheddar and give it a little stir. There. Now that needs to cool before we continue. Now we've let our filling cool to approximately room temperature. If it's too warm, it doesn't work well when you put it in the dough and we've turned our oven on to 350. Our dough has risen very nicely, and we're just gonna punch that down, get the air out of it, and then take some for rolling. We'll pinch off about oh, that much or so. Cover that back up, and spread out some of our flour. Now in this part, I do use white flour, I find I prefer the white flour just when I'm rolling things out. But that's the only uh, the only white flour that is used in these in my version. So and this rolling pin is actually a gift from Rick because one of the ladies from church, Alice Tetro, has had tried one and really liked it. So lent me hers to try and I liked it as well. So it was a gift from Rick, and I have used it a lot. Of course, this will be the day when things don't go well. 
because I'm on camera. But so far, not too many glitches. So I take a cup of that size to make, which is, if you're taking the length of your finger, approximately the length of the index finger in diameter. And cut my circles. back underneath so yes and I use a scoop I used to just use a spoon but I find the scoop helps a lot in getting them more uniform and holding together your filling for you so it's just a folding over slow and careful folding over and then to take a little bit of flour and to get it just again everybody has their own preferences and we just do that about 47 more times ready to go in the oven. I just make sure none of them are touching. That one's a little bit close. There. And that one. And now we'll just take them and put them right into the oven. As we said before, oven's at 350 and then bake them for approximately half an hour. Again, depends on your oven. So our first pan is ready. So I'll just put on my big oven mitts. I will pull that pan out of the oven. There we go. Looking nice and golden. I'll set it right here so I can take them off the pan. All right. So there they are. We just take them off. They do take a little while to cool thoroughly because they are a very heavy, um, because there's a lot of goodness in them, a lot of, of filling, they take a little while to thaw. So make sure they're thoroughly thawed before you put them into the freezer. And thoroughly thawed, thoroughly cooled. There's my nervousness. I was wondering if you were gonna... Uh... There's my nervousness showing up. I've been trying to get through this without showing too much nervousness, but obviously there was a little bit there. <laughs> so. They are ready and we'll let them cool for we'll let them cool for maybe five to ten minutes before you try and eat them unless you want to burn mouth. So we have got uh, quite a few baked here, just over three dozen here, and we have another pan still in the oven, just finishing up. So these first ones have been cooling long enough. Now comes the fun part, the actual tasting. Hopefully they're as good as usual. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. plus. They turned out well again. So good. Mm. Oh. So we hope you enjoyed the video. I know this one's been requested a few times by our top fans. <laughs> We've got at least five of those. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and good luck when you make them. And if you have any questions, let me know. Mm -hmm. Happy baking. <laughs>